Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Joseph and Mary and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Now I want you to uh, use your imagination. It is Christmas Day after all. Use your imagination. So there you are at a royal function. Perhaps it's a garden party in the grounds of Buckingham Palace and you're awaiting the arrival of the royal party. And then suddenly one voice is heard above the hubbub, and the Queen's arrival is announced. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please for the Queen, Elizabeth II, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom, of Britain and Northern Ireland, and of her and other realms and territories, Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith. And you've been told that if the Queen should speak to you personally, you are to address her first as Your Majesty, and thereafter as Mom. And now Prince Philip is announced. Ladies and gentlemen, His Royal Highness Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, Earl of Meredith and Baron Greenwich, Knight of the Garter, Knight of the Thistle, Order of Merit, Knight, Grand Cross of the Order of the British Empire, Companion of the Order of Australia, Companion of the Queen's Service, Order, Privy Councillor. Now make sure you address him properly. Your Royal Highness, first of all, and thereafter as Sir. And finally today, Prince Charles is also in attendance. Ladies and gentlemen, His Royal Highness Prince Charles Philip Arthur George, Prince of Wales, KG, KT, GCB, OM, AK, QSO, CO, PC, ADC, Earl of Chester, Duke of Cornwall, Duke of Rothsay, Earl of Carrick, Baron of Renfrew, Lord of the Isles, and Prince and Great Steward of Scotland. He, like his father, is to be addressed first of all as your Royal Highness and thereafter 
as so. Titles of respect. Titles that say how we should honour the bearer. Titles that tell us who they are and, by implication, who we are as well. Titles that are both man-made and man-given. And think to yourself what a contrast there is between these man-made, man-given titles and the God-made, God-given titles that announce the birth of Jesus. Do not be afraid, the angel said. I bring you good tidings of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. Saviour, Christ, the Lord. What do these titles mean? Well, first of all, the one born is the saviour. He is the one who will deliver God's people. He is the one who has come to set them free. But free from what? Well, the great hope of the Jewish people at the time was for salvation from Roman occupation. The Romans and all their cronies who extracted taxes from the people for the imperial coffers and lined their own pockets at the same time at the expense of the ordinary men and women of Israel. But this saviour had come to deliver the people from a far deeper and a far darker power. He had come to set the people free from the power and influences that can turn you into an oppressor, an extortioner, an exploiter. Be that an extortioner, extortioner and an exploiter of other people or of other individuals. He had come to set the people free from the limitations of sin that had so disfigured and distorted their relationship with God. He had come to set his people free from the wages of sin, that is, death, and open up for them eternal life in God's promise, new creation, eternal life to be received through him and in his name. The angel announced Jesus as the promised saviour. And secondly, the one born is announced to be the Christ or Messiah. He is the one on whom the hopes of God's people rest. To be the Christ, to be the Messiah, means to be the anointed one. The anointed one. That is, to have been set aside for a special service, as that perhaps as prophet, as priest, or as king. Israel had been awaiting the long-expected Messiah, an heir of David who would, as God's anointed, bring to fulfilment God's promises for his people. He would be a prophet, that is, God's spokesperson. He would, as priest, make intercession for God's people. He would, as king, rule over the nations with justice and in righteousness. He would be the one in whom all could find God's truth revealed, God's forgiveness received, God's promises fulfilled. The one in whom all may have life and life in all its fullness. Jesus was announced as the promised one, the Christ. And thirdly, the one born is announced as being the Lord. That is, the Old Testament 
title for God, given in place of the name of God, Yahweh, which Jews considered to be too holy to write or pronounce, and which translators of the scriptures into Greek recorded as the Lord. And so the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger is described and is announced in the highest possible terms. He is, as the angel who had appeared to Joseph declared, none other than Emmanuel, that is, God with us. God with us. It's a wonder, it's an act of divine grace. Luke and the other gospel writers will record and describe for us. They will tell us how Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favour with God and men. How he began his ministry, proclaiming in word and deed that the kingdom of God is near and that all should repent of their sins and believe the good news. They will tell how he healed the sick, how he cast out demons, how he raised the dead, how he talked with an unmatched and recognised authority, how he inspired love and devotion in some, but ridicule and fear in others, how his enemies conspired together and had him arrested, tried and finally crucified him. But how God raised this Jesus to life, setting the divine seal of approval on all Jesus had said and all Jesus had done. And how the risen Lord Jesus Christ commissions his followers to preach repentance and forgiveness of sins in his name, not just to Israel, but to all nations. To all nations nations. And that brings us back to that announcement the angel made that first Christmas night. Good news of great joy that will be for all people. For all people. Saviour, Christ, the Lord. That's how his coming was announced. And that is how we are to know him and how we are to greet him. Titles of respect, titles which say how we should honour the bearer. Titles that tell us who he is and by implication who we are. Titles that are both man-made, God-made rather, and God-given. But how easy it is to sentimentalise this baby in a manger, to allow secular depictions of the nativity of Christmas cards in school nativity plays, Hollywood films, and even in some well-known and well-loved Christmas carols, to obscure the true meaning, the true wonder of Jesus' birth, and the real necessity of his coming to us. And how easy it is for our familiarity to veer towards disrespect. It reminds me how many, many years ago I was playing football with a friend and I saw my Auntie Gertie walking past. I was about 10 years of age, I suppose, thinking myself now to be a man. Auntie Gertie walked past. She was a rather severe aunt. And Mum and Dad always called her Gertie and now, feeling myself to be old enough to be a man, I walked up to her, took her hand, which surprised her, and as we walked along, I looked up and said, well, how are you, Gertie? She stopped. She looked down at me with daggered eyes and said, Auntie Gertie, to you. I didn't make that mistake again. You see, I had addressed her in a way that was inappropriate for me and unacceptable to her. Saviour, Christ, the Lord. That's how Jesus' coming was announced and that is how we 
are to greet him. And indeed, that's how we will greet him if we truly know him as he is. And the mark of one who truly knows Jesus as he is, is in our addressing him as my Saviour, my Christ, my Lord. And it's upon such men, women and children that God's favour truly rests. Now you may never have the privilege of attending a royal function or of being spoken to by the Queen. But the good news is that the King of Kings has invited you, has invited each one of us into his presence. But if you are to attend, you need to get the protocol right. You must know and accept him as your saviour, as your Christ and your Lord. You must listen as he speaks to your heart and bow your knee in recognition of who he truly is. And wonder of wonder, condescension of condescensions, when you do so, the Saviour, the Christ, the Lord, your Saviour, your Christ, your Lord, will look at you and call you my friend. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts to receive your gift of grace, the love that releases us from our bondage and gives us freedom. Freedom from cares and worries that stifle our happiness, freedom from sins that cling to us and to which we cling. Freedom from all that prevents us becoming what we can be and ought to be. So bring us, O Lord, to the experience of life more abundant, for your name's sake. Amen.